Hello, and you're listening to FPCast, the podcast for the pursuits where we bullshit about the week in pop culture. I am Luke. And I'm Jacinta. And this week we're talking about... Movies, movies, television, television, collectible, collectible, video games. Shopping, spending, yeah, buying. Because, you know, this weekend, we don't have Thanksgiving. No. The only thing we're thankful for at this time of year is not being Americans. Mm-hmm. And I say that every year. Yep. Um, and I mean it even more this year. <laughs> so yes. I think in the past I was joking. This year I'm like, I'm deadly serious. Mm-hmm. But uh, doesn't mean that our retail outlets aren't going to let the excuse for some Black Friday uh, shenanigans Oh, yeah, because so many online outlets in the US have a Black Friday stuff so everyone here goes we're going to get some nice cheap shit from the internet and so the retailers here are like oh dear we need to combat that and there's been heaps of sales sales, sales all everywhere. weekend so you know we've risked it we've mm-hmm. been out there while people are getting uh, shot mm-hmm. um, trampled yes uh, actually none of that stuff's happening in Australia no, is it it's no. very calm yeah it's fine I was going to say I haven't bought too much but I did impulse buy a PS4 so yes I did, I did yeah. kind of but I was sitting at work and this sale kind of came up and I was like you know what I'm just going to do it and I walked back out to my students and went I just bought a PS4 and they're like great and started telling me about all these games that I don't know anything about. I'm like, ah, and I too got much, too much. Really cheap games. I haven't played the PS4 much this year, so I, I did pick up Titanfall 2 mm. and Dishonored 2 and Battlefield 1. Yeah, I'm going to buy Battlefield 1 before it goes back up to full price too. I'm going to get me some uh, some World War shooty action. Probably won't play them until uh, the holidays. So we'll have yeah. a month off uh, in a couple of weeks. So looking forward to that. So, uh, and another thing, and this is a really good tip if anyone is in Australia and interested in Lego Dimensions. Now, this is correct at the time of recording. I don't know, you know, this is a ticking time bomb of a situation. Mm. I don't know how long this will last. But if you go to the Lego Shop at Home site, and you, you have won't to search for dimensions. yeah you won't find the dimension section. But if you search for dimensions, suddenly you're going to get results, and all the new packs are about. 80% off for some reason. Mm. Now, the 70 to 80% off. Now, the older packs are still full price, but things like um, Gremlins, Adventure Time, uh, Female Ghostbusters, all that stuff is super cheap. So, like, the um, Female Ghostbusters one, instead of being $65, $70, is, like, $15.99. And you can get level packs. Like, I got the Sonic the Hedgehog one for $9.99. I thought it was a mistake. I thought they were going to cancel it. Uh, if you read their terms and conditions, if something's priced wrong, they can cancel it. But they shipped it. And uh, apparently these prices have been like that for about uh, probably about 10 days now. So, mm. look, jump on it if you're interested in that stuff. Or if you have someone who would be interested in that stuff for, for Christmas, Christmas. Yes. then that would be really cool as well. There's a tip probably the most useful information I've given anybody mm. in this podcast. Pretty much, yeah. And uh, speaking of which, yes. this is an odd one because we've just been in a shopping frenzy. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's no movies this week. Yeah, there wasn't. We racked our brains to try and think of what the hell we were actually going to see this weekend. But the fact that neither of us were particularly passionate about seeing anything this week uh, kind of made up our minds for us. I'd and like... we saw nothing. <laughs> yeah, I'd already... I would have been bad Santa tooing if I hadn't seen it a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And I'm interested in the founder, Michael Keaton. I was a bit less interested when I discovered that he's not playing the Hamburglar. Mm. I think that was a part that was absolutely... He was bored to play. Uh, he'd be killer. Yeah. Jonah Hill as the Grimace. Mm-hmm. So who, who else is there? I mean, McCheese has sort of been phased out, but uh, mm. I'd throw him in anyway. Yeah. Well, you've got to have Ronald. Might be a good job for, um, like, Bob Odenkirk or someone there, McCheese. <laughs> I kind of like that casting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then Ronald... I don't know. Unless Michael Keaton was Ronald and you get a young blood like um, Aaron Paul as the Hamburglar. Maybe, but why couldn't um, Michael Keaton just really stretch himself and just play all of them? Like a big, you know, big mama's house kind of. Uh, sort of the clumps? Yeah. Yeah. Kind of situation. Yeah, is it the clumps? Clump it up. Nutty Professor 2 yeah. was the clumps. Yeah. Lady Murphy. In Big Mama's house, does that same thing happen? No. 
No, that that's a cop pretending to be a woman okay, in order right. to catch some baddies. Okay, I'm getting my... Um, he does play them both, but I'm he's just I'm getting my late out. 2000s uh, yeah. comedies mixed up. But yes. they're the same entity. Yes. The, that's more of a Mrs. Doubtfire situation. Okay. As opposed to clumping it up. All right, cool. I'm glad that was clarified. And we got that? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah, we didn't see a film. We're not reviewing a film today. Maybe it'll be a shorter episode because really not much is happening. We're, we're right on that precipice before we get into the December content. Mm. So uh, I love December content. We've got a little bit of trailers. We're mainly going to talk about TV. We'll catch up on Westworld. I have a absolutely killer Westworld theory that I would like to share with everybody. Uh, everybody's going to stick around for the spoiler section, which will be at the end. Uh, we're going to catch up on Gilmore Girls. Uh, I saw a show called Search Party I would like to talk about. And um, really, that's about it. And mm -hmm. the, the biggest problem I've had mm -hmm. is that we are on tenterhooks, edge of the sea. The only thing we're thinking about isn't actually pop culture-wise. Star Wars is up there, but it's not mm. the main thing. We're thinking about the, the bingo bundle, baby bundle. Yeah, I know. Like, when are we going to get the official um, confirmation of little Toaster Face McNugget's name? He doesn't have a name. <sighs> and quite frankly, there's, like, I understand that they're a private couple. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. And I understand that, um, you know, you don't want to sell this straight to New Idea or whatever, Women's Weekly. You want to listen to some bids, hear everyone's offer, mm -hmm. sort of a sh like in the Shark Tank. Yep. You hear them all out. Oh, they got to pitch first, yeah. You pitch, yep. But now, as we're getting close to Christmas mm. and this baby uh, doesn't have a name, yep. I feel like you're taking the piss. What, like, what are we supposed to write on the gift tag when we send this kid a gift? I was going to knit a Christmas stocking. Yeah. Uh, I've got rocket zots done. Mm -hmm. With a little rocket on it. A little Very rocket classy. on it. Yeah. yeah. What, what about the other one? I just realised again, if there's any new listeners, they have no <laughs> idea what we're talking about. We're talking about Sam Worthington, best bloody actor in Australia, and his missus, uh, Lara, where the bloody hell are you, Bingle? Here for, hereafter, therefore, known as Bingo. Bingo. Wertho yeah. and Bingo. Yeah. Had a baby. The royal family of Rockingham. We want to know the, the name yeah. so that uh, we can start manufacturing commemorative plates and tea yep. towels. Yep. Yes, I have my Prince William, I have my Prince Harry, Rocket Zod is on its way, and I need the new little Wertho bundle of joy. So... Uh, we we do Google it quite obsessively. We find out. <laughs> we really do. <laughs> um, I thought, you know, I started to look up Sam Wertho's family tree. I thought, you know, is there... And look, and if anybody can give us this scoop, I know mm. we're not new idea or anything, and we don't... Generally, we shy away from new ideas on this podcast. Yes, only old ones, yeah. Yeah, but well, well-tested ideas, I yeah, would say. Yeah. Uh, but if anybody can get us that scoop, and here are some ideas, you know, you might uh, find the social media account of one of the family members mm -hmm. who might just say, oh, was it Target during their sale, mm. bought uh, um, some Duplo yeah. to put away for Little rat face, And then we'll go, oh, <laughs> oh. Little rat face. Maybe mm. that's, that's the, you know, Little Spudo, whatever. I don't mm. know what they're going to call it. But uh, if you have any way of finding out, do let us know. Instead, you found out a little bit of information, which perhaps could be a clue. And certainly in times as desperate for news as this, mm. uh, we may as well check this for its veracity, mine it, see if there's anything in it. Yeah. Um, so, like, I mean, we've broken some some non stories in the past but this is I thought you were gonna say some cultural taboos, but no, we've no, done no. we've done both. Yeah, yeah. But this is like top shelf non news. Now during the week, I believe this was on uh Lara Bingo Bingle's uh Instagram stories, so you know that thing that they stole from Snapchat. Is she on Instagram? Yeah. I thought they were too private. I didn't even look for her. Mm, she, yeah, she's on Instagram. Her feed is so boring. I don't even follow her. Does she cover her children in blankets like Michael Jackson? No, though I did watch her latest uh, story and it was there was a little remote control car that they'd bought Rocket, though someone had sent for Rocket as a gift and you could see <laughs> Rocket's thundering hooves yeah. running next to this car looking like he was about to smash it like Leaving Godzilla. Leaving a, a trail of Jats crackers. <laughs> yeah. Um... Anyway, there was this... Uh, that apparently was on her... I, I checked her Instagram. It wasn't on there, so I believe it was an Instagram story. And she put a picture that she had been Googling. Do do your ears keep 
growing as you get older or something like that. And there was a spelling mistake in there as well. Classic bingo. Oh, bingo. And um, the article that I read was basically just going, oh, look, here's a thing. Let's speculate on what this means. It was really, really, really non-news. But, you know, let us speculate on what that means. Does it mean that the new baby has, like, has tiny giant ears? ears. Well, maybe does he have giant ears? Does he have tiny ears? Like, there must be something deformed about this child. Maybe that's it, because you sort of, you see the baby and he's all swaddled up and you think yeah. that's cute. And then, like, yeah. Dumbo, you realise he's actually <laughs> swaddled in his own ears, which unfurl uh, yeah. around him. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, the royal family uh, over in England, they've, yeah. they've got some big ears in their lineage, so I think it's only natural that uh, that could happen here. Absolutely. It's all that royal blood just pumping through their heads. Maybe that's why she didn't reveal that it had been born for quite some yeah. time, just because it of just the... just tore her up. Yeah, the sheer... <laughs> um, Magnitude of those ears. Yeah, pushing that through, mm. like uh, giving birth to a big old milk jug. Mm. Poor bugger. Mm. She just pushed the FA cup right out of her punani. <laughs> so, so maybe Jughead is a, a name that yeah, could happen. Okay, yeah, A little baby Jughead. Yep. Uh, Juggers, the Juggernaut. Juggo. <laughs> the Juggernaut. I'm the Juggernaut, bitch. <laughs> that would be his, like, his first words. <laughs> I love that. Fantastic. Yep. So, uh, yeah. Or do you think um, were those ears... Are just They're getting just slowly to, getting bigger. Getting bigger, yeah. Yep. And maybe that's why Avatar keeps getting delayed, because mm. James Cameron's, like, trying to find... Uh, They've got to get some more money in the budget to CGI his ears so that they look smaller. Well, they might have to get another Avatar. Like, Wertho might have to go into a smaller-eared oh. Avatar in order to then go into his Catman Avatar. Oh. So that we don't get sort of, you know, freaked out by yeah. by bloody great ears on this guy. Maybe, yeah. Though I did um, read, because she, she'd put the, what she'd Googled and then the answer for it as well. Because I was like, what a dumbass. Who Googles, do your ears well, keep growing? And it turned out that it said, well, yes, kind of your ears don't actually grow, but because of the slackening of the yeah. tissues and muscles and gravity and stuff, they may appear bigger. And I'm like, fuck you, bingo. Isn't it the same with the nose as well? Doesn't the nose keep growing? Maybe, I don't know. I believe uh, it well, does. Well, Bingo hasn't Googled that, so I don't know. Okay, so we're, we're talk- looking at a baby here with a small nose yeah. and giant ears. Yeah, so he's like uh, a half Dumbo. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think he can fly? I don't know. Gosh. Is that something that happens at puberty, or is that like a... I don't know. I can't remember with Dumbo. I don't know when he started flying. I'm just waiting now, because isn't Burton going to do a live-action Dumbo? Didn't yeah, he pick maybe. up that one? Maybe. Is Little Rocket Zot going to put a little hat on and be a racist crow and tell him to that he needs to fly? I thought you were going to say, like, the, just the little helpful mouse friend. But maybe. Uh, straight to racism with you yeah. every time we talk about Rockingham. Well, look, it's just, it's just so natural. <laughs> um... <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to think of a funny anecdote from the Rock- Rockingham buy and sell page, but I just I just can't bring one to mind immediately. Yeah. Join that on Facebook if you're in the area. It's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah well, yes. Lots to learn. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, we'll keep you posted. Of course, uh, we'll be happy to break that news as soon as we know. And if anyone, as I said, has a scoop, yeah. uh, let us know I have what pa- this baby's name is. I always panic is. that the news is going to break the day after we record. And we have to wait a whole week to report on what will essentially be old news. I just know there's some new listeners just so confused and like, why is this important? Would be well, it's because he's the best bloody actor in the world. He is because he was in the best bloody movie. Yeah, which made the most bloody money. Absolutely. Like, we, I don't know what's confusing about this. We went to Toy Fair today. We yeah. saw a couple of Avatar figures. Now, mm. we didn't see a though, like an actual wheelchair though. Yeah, which we were hoping to, to be honest. And if we saw it, we would have bought it. I saw his... Um, girlfriend, Natiri. Yeah. Now, she was five bucks yep. at one store, and then another store I saw Jake's avatar for 15 bucks. Oh, I didn't see that. Yeah. Okay. So, don't tell me we've got a quality, uh, because we don't. Uh. We buy three of her for one of him. Remember the olden days before we knew what Rocket Zot's name was, and we thought that he was going to call his kid Jake? Jake. Like something so normal. Yeah. <laughs> Rocket Zot. I, th- I thought he was going to call him Iron Jim yeah. after James Cameron, who gave him such a wonderful uh-huh. career. But uh, well, you never know. There's, there's the second kid. True. Iron could be his first name. Jim, the second name. Perfect. Should we talk about a trailer? I guess so. There's only one trailer that I <laughs> want to talk about. And it, look, if there were other trailers, I was so 
invested in this one. Yep. That everything else has just been uh, completely, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Flushed out of my mind. Mm-hmm. Animate out. Yep. Uh, Cars 3. Mm, the, now, oh, colon, the death of Lightning McQueen. Yeah. Now, if you haven't seen this, check it out. It's, it's only short. But uh, Cars 2. Mm. Now, obviously, people have their favourite um, Pixar films, favourite Disney films, favourite animation. Pretty objectively, we can agree that uh, Cars is the best series. Mm-hmm. Because... I mean, uh, I haven't seen it, but I can't see how it would not be. Well, most people either drive a car yep. or have been in a car yep. or have seen one. Mm-hmm. Not everyone's seen a clownfish, you know? Ex- yeah, exactly. Or has stretchy powers mm-hmm. like that other film. Yeah, or live in Hawaii. Yeah. yeah. yeah not everyone lives in Hawaii. Mm. So the way to alienate a lot of your viewers mm. straight away. But with this, Monsters, Inc., mm. okay, like, yeah, it's more business owners and stuff maybe but I don't you know I haven't even thought about getting incorporated yet let alone this whole monster oh, angle crazy so Cars pretty great number two like the first one was um, a remake of that Michael J Fox movie uh, Doc Hollywood because a lot of people were like oh that's a good movie but um, it would be really great if these characters Royal had wheels cars. on their yeah, hands yeah. and feet yeah, yeah. And then the second one is the spy one with Michael Caine. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of lighter. Like, I've read the book on Book Was Better, Mm -hmm. but I couldn't get through the movie because it was too good. Yeah. And I thought... um, You just don't need your brains dribbling out of your ears. Well, I think with, you know, medical science and everything, I could live another 60 or so years. Mm. I should... I've watched about 10 minutes of it. Yeah. I should spread it out. I don't want to be done mm. with it all now. Like, yeah, let me catch yeah. up and watch a little bit at a time over yeah. the next few decades. Mm-hmm. So, uh, but it's light affair. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, it's secret agent stuff. And, um, you know, Tomato is a secret uh, agent. Can you mm-hmm. imagine that? That hillbilly guy? <laughs> crazy fish out of water <laughs> mm-hmm. not to, not to alienate anybody with another fish reference but um and it's got like Finn McMissile in it uh-huh um which is what I used to call my my old fella in high school mm-hmm seen my Finn McMissile <laughs> sure let me get my microscope out come on oh. and uh yeah so this new you describe this new trailer because I feel like um no, I'm not saying these cars are on rails. Mm. I mean, they're probably on roads and stuff. Mm-hmm. But I don't want to get into a Thomas the Tank Engine situation, but probably derailing just a tiny bit. Mm. So what happens in this, this trailer? Uh, well, there's a racetrack, yeah. which is, you know, seems fitting. Um, and then you see just fucking bits of poor old Lightning McQueen just go flying everywhere. He has a bad stack. Like, he looks fucked as. You don't even, do you not, I don't think you even see their faces in this thing. No. Like, you just recognise him by, the, like, the paint job and yeah. stuff. And it's far more realistic. Yeah. Like, like it, it was looks brutal. Real. Like, it looks so brutal. I'm not even invested in this universe, but I'm like, fuck. Yeah, Lightning McQueen, you know, this jolly car, voice mm. of um, Owen Wilson. Mm-hmm. Um, and never have you had a happier, more upbeat um, celebrity than <laughs> Owen Wilson. Yeah. Uh, yeah, just shattered. Mm, literally shattered. So, um, we're adults. We've seen some shit. I was still pretty uh, moved by it. I ah. can't imagine if you've got young kids and they saw that. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you can't show this be, to your kids. What they'll be thinking. Mm. Um, I would have shat a kitten if I'd seen that mm. when I was younger. Yeah, maybe it'll be a story like um, like old Seabiscuit, the racehorse that, like, broke his leg or some crazy thing and then came back and won all the whatever he did it would be like that he'll like have a mega stack just destroy all his shit he'll have to repair himself maybe mentoring it a young ca- younger car along the way who knows and then come back and either be the hero or encourage the new car to win knowing that his time has passed but he can still be useful what I'm wondering mm. is if this is Pixar, they're just they're tired of people talking tired. about uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Uh. Uh, because no, but seriously, yeah. like having people. I, I look, I'm going to admit something. Okay. When I said that it was the best film, yeah, I was actually being ironic and kind of. What do you mean sarcastic? Well, like when you call someone with red hair blue, mm-hmm. like we do here in Australia. Okay. I actually meant it's the worst film, and people say it's the worst mm-hmm. film all the time. Yeah. 
And um, if you were Pixar, you mm. would be pretty tired of that. Mm. But you probably find it quite exhaust in <laughs> uh, get right up your pipe. Yeah. Your back seat. Yeah, so I wonder if it's their way of really raising the stakes so that, you know, sarcastic, larrikin, ragamuffin cultural commentators like ourselves mm. sit up and take notice and go, this isn't for kids anymore. This isn't fucking around. This is real gritty cars action. Oh, gr- gritty reboot. Like, this is the real deal. But you know how, like, Toy Story 3, spoilers for Toy Story 3, but if you haven't seen it, fuck you. Um, when they're all on the conveyor belt and they're oh facing their own mortality oh and God. there's the fire and everything. <laughs> everybody remembers that. And everybody yes. has such a visceral reaction. Uh. No one had a visceral reaction to Finn Big Missile, unless, like, they vomited or something <laughs> while they were watching it. But I think this is their way of just going, yeah. oh, you think Cars is lightweight? You yeah. think that... No, this is going to be the most intense, amazing, awesome movie about Cars you've ever seen. This yeah. is one of those things where, like... Um, you know, Vin Diesel mm-hmm. watches this trailer and just goes, damn, son, because, you That's know... That's so e- e- extreme. Well, he just realises that it's far more fast, it's far more furious. Mm. Even Paul Walker, like, leans over a cloud and is like, whoa! <laughs> And maybe yeah. that's what it is. Maybe there's like some parallels there. Yeah, I don't maybe. know. Maybe that was an inspiration. Yeah. Or maybe it's going to be like a. They're just going to do like a Star Wars ripoff, and there's like a a black car with a red stripe down it that just completely fucks Lightning McQueen up, and there'll be some other kind of protege that will have to avenge Lightning McQueen. I know a black car with a red stripe. Huh? His name was Kit. Oh. And David Hasselhoff. There you go. Rode it around. Mm-hmm. And. Uh, that was pretty scary. Was Kit scary? Yeah, like a talking car. Are you kidding me? Can you imagine that? Sh- yeah? Very scary. Yeah, okay, cool. So, um, I what interests me about the Smash is I have been very, very curious about car anatomy. Okay. For a long time. Yeah. don't mean real life car anatomy. I think that stuff's just really boring to be honest mm. but I mean like cars Pixar cars anatomy mm-hmm. because we've talked about this to a degree before but there's this idea of they have doors with handles mm-hmm. every part of them is built for use by humans and yet there are no humans in this world mm. now I've, you can't see what's beyond those doors the sides of the windows are blacked out the front is just the eyes i used to think and i think i said this on the book was better that if you open the door you would just see the brain and all organs and everything would spill out Mm -hmm. now i'm beginning to think as we sort of rocket forward into the future that there's going to be self-driving cars right we've we've heard about this yeah i've also seen death proof where someone gets into a car and then it gets locked and they Mm -hmm. can't get out so i'm thinking that maybe like humans got into these cars couldn't get out and the cars are just continuing to drive around with skeletons of their owners inside them. Mm-hmm. So hopefully um, when Steve, Steve <laughs> Lightning McQueen, McQueen crashes, it's just going to be skeletons flying everywhere. It's going to be like an owl vomiting. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, right. So hopefully we'll find out what happened to the humans. I think that's, that's your dark, gritty reboot. Where are the humans in this world? Mm. I imagine realistically they may just have, like, robot parts inside the car. But, sure, skeletons. But why, then, are the cars built for human use? Maybe they're from... uh, Maybe it's, like, some sort of future thing where they don't have cars anymore and they consulted uh, historical documents to go, well, this is what a car looks like. It's like, well, we don't need to use it for any of that stuff. It's like, no, no, but we'll still just, just make it look the same. It is built on the bones of the dead mm-hmm. that um, Radiator Springs. Okay. Let me tell you. Anyway, uh, we might even see that one, you know? We get to go to a lot of Disney oh, uh, yeah. previews. Okay. Yeah, so, I'm not going to watch the other two. Maybe I'll just read a Wikipedia summary or something of them. Just watch Doc Hollywood, and every okay. time Michael J., uh, Michael J. Fox is on, just start just think going... Just a red car. Vroom, vroom, vroom <laughs> in your head. Okay. Yeah. And, I mean, I'll uh, do that anyway. Just imagine, Ooh. yeah. That he's a car, okay. a red car. Cool. There you go. That was trailers. Mm. Tick. <laughs> so, 25 minutes. We've talked about... Absolutely not. Lara Bingle Googling ears. Yep. And a 15-second Cars 3 trailer. Yep. Okay. 
Let's talk about TV is where it was all happening. Yeah. Do you want me to quickly do Search Party and then you can Gilmore it up? Yeah, because I feel like it's going to be hard to talk about Gilmore Girls without being spoilery. Okay, well... Yeah. All right. Well, let's. I'm going to talk about Search Party certainly without spoilers. Mm-hmm. Search Party is a new show. Um, there's ten half-hour episodes. It's a m- black comedy mystery. It's uh, one of the creators is Michael Showalter, who did Wet Hot American Summer. It stars Alia Shawcat, who I always thought was Alia Shawcat, uh, who's um, you know she's what maybe in Arrested Development. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, there are these self-obsessed uh, young 20 people, 20s people that realise that um, a college acquaintance has gone missing and Alia becomes obsessed with this and wants to find her. And it, it sort of builds itself as, a, like, a mystery with twists and turns and things like that. I have seen it all now. I've, I've The mystery solved. It's no mystery to me. I know exactly what's happening. I think it's, like, the real deal. It is a show. It is a thing you can watch. Yeah. Uh, we've talked about recently about how I really struggle to watch network shows Mm -hmm. and it's definitely not a network show. I think it's TBS, but it really looks like a Netflix show or a, you know, it's that type of feel and at times it is quite funny, but my, uh, it's not a, a, oh God, go and see it. It's more of a, if you've got nothing else to see and you're looking for something different, watch it. Um, I sort of had it in the background while I was playing, uh, Pokemans. It was good, but... I feel like if this show had a kind of mixing desk with all these sort of dials, I would like maybe either turn the funny up a bit more Mm -hmm. or turn the mystery up a bit more. What it lacks is you don't finish an episode going, oh, shit, I really need to know what happens next because this mystery is really great. I actually don't think it's as successful as a mystery. Okay. But uh, characters are cool. Uh, Parker Posey's in it. There's some fun people in and um, it's certainly worth a if you're looking for something to watch mm. uh, no harm in watching that first 20 odd minute episode yeah, right. anyway yeah there you go yeah. but the real story this week was Gilmore Girls which I know a lot of people on social media are sick to death of people talking about Gilmore Girls but you know what fuck you mm. Um, so Gilmore Girls was back for four 90-minute episodes, uh, a year in the life. We had winter, spring, summer, and uh, fall. Fall, because the leaves we fall, fall off the trees. Leaves fall down. Yeah. We had snow, lamb, hot, and fall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So I've, I, I think my experience with it was very similar to a lot of the kind of reviews that I'd read online. That people aren't like there's no a hundred percent love for this thing. I feel like it's even for people who had maybe watched a lot of Gilmore Girls back in the day, which I did. I, I like the Gilmore Girls a lot. Um, there was definitely an adjustment period to come back and it really, really hits the ground running, smacking you in the face with that really Gilmore Girlsy dialogue. And I sat through that whole first one just going, oh, I hate this. I had to go and get a cider to get me through it. I was not having a good time with that first one, which was uh, winter. I just couldn't keep track of what anybody was saying. It was Mm -hmm. like listening to a podcast on uh, 1.5 speed. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, I know, I think the, the two combined girls just reach this kind of frequency, which yeah. to, to my um, <laughs> dull old ears <laughs> became this kind of persistent hum. Yeah. And I certainly use the go back 10 seconds button on uh, Netflix more than once mm-hmm. to uh, take on what was happening. But um, don't you think that, I don't know, like people are sort of couching their watching of this as a sort of guilty pleasure. But you, no one hated it because there's no way you would get, like, you wouldn't get past 15 minutes if you hated it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think I think if you're already invested in these characters in this world, you're going to push on. Because there's, in the first episode, you, there's not a lot of returning characters. And to be honest, you're in this to see all those characters again. I think Netflix just has this really great ability to when they bring back a show to bring back that show mm. we saw it with fuller house mm-hmm. it wasn't like oh this is a modern cynical take or anything it was mm. 
people had sat yeah. down and said all the elements you like about that we're going to be absolutely 100% true to them and we're going to that's what we're going to do yeah and I feel like they did that with Gilmore Girls. So there's there's this kind of weird dissonance where it's it's not the sort of show that's made now. Like mm. there's something it's very about 90s. it that feels still yeah, still yeah. feels nineties. To hear, hear these very very nineties characters then be making really modern references, like there's like Hamilton jokes and stuff like that in it. For me, that took a bit of adjusting too. I was like, yeah. no, no, you stay back there. Because I'm used to watching reruns of it on TV and them talking about their old, you know, Mac computers and stuff like that. VHS tapes. Um, and I did watch it all too, by the way. Yes, if yes. people are curious. You finished it my before way I did, actually. Oh, yeah, I did, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, yes. Yes, yes. Uh, so, I think like, everyone's looking pretty good. I think from the trailer when I first saw Luke, I was like, Jesus, Luke looks like a fucking bin man, but he looks... <laughs> and he does. <laughs> he does, but not like that bad. He looks like he's given up. <laughs> he does a little bit, yeah. But, uh, yeah, you know, it, it's part of his, like, he's got a bit of spiky charm. Mm, he does. He's, he's a bit of an old grumble guts, as uh, I like to say. Good old Luke. But, um, no, I think Rory looks fine. <laughs> okay. um, That's high praise. <laughs> um, uh, Laura looks good. Yeah. Well, look. Good. It. Good enough. Let me just get it this out. Of okay. The way. All right. Because I've talked about my Gilmore Girl. Yes. Fantasy before. Yes. But you added a new element that I wasn't very impressed with. I was joking about it. Okay. Grandmother. Good. Um, that was just a joke. <laughs> but, I, you know, and the, the, this is just fantasy. I don't think this is sexist because I think yeah. that's something about public figures and TV shows and characters. If I was in, like, in a TV show, I'd want people to, like, have a crush on me. I'd, mm-hmm. like, I'd hope that someone would anyway. Mm-hmm. And you know what I mean? And I, and I feel like it's just fantasy. I think mm-hmm. it's fine for women to go, oh, that guy is really hot, I, you know, on the mm-hmm. show. Like, when Supernatural came in or whatever, they might go, ooh, I'd like to get in his Impala. Am I making all the right references? Yeah. Um, and, <laughs> and bust some ghosts uh, and, and, and find a Chupacabra. Is that what they do? <laughs> I think there was a Chupacabra it episode. Has to be. Yeah. Um, go look, get some flashlights and search out a Mothman. Yeah. Did they search out a Mothman? There was an episode with bugs, sure. Great. Yeah. Um, but so, yeah. So, I, I think the idea of um, both Gilmore Girls at the same time mm. is... Uh, See, look, I'm already not down with this, but you, knowing that I was not down with this, sent me an excerpt of some fan fiction, some incesty Gilmore Girls slashy fan fiction, which, if I had the ability to erase things <laughs> from my mind, I would be using it for that. Okay, look, two caveats here. One, <laughs> I did not write this. I just cut and pasted it off the net because of what we were talking about at the time. And two, uh, I had had some drinks. Yeah. You know, and I'll add another one. Three, um, no, I, I'm not approving of the incest angle. I'm talking about, like, just these as, as characters. Mm-hmm. In a Who are mother and daughter, thing. yep. But they're not really mother and daughter. And um, it's not about <laughs> them, you know, I like... I'm assuming the third person in the situation would provide a sort of buffer, kind of like a, a, a pillow uh, mm-hmm. fort in between two people <laughs> okay. who, who is, is sharing a bed uh, yep. but not wanting to brush up against each other too much. Yep. So um, that's the sacrifice I'd be willing to make when mm-hmm. I went down to... Where, where is Stars the show Hollow. set? Radiator Springs? Stars Sleepy, Hollow. Sleepy Hollow? No. Anyway, um, speaking of Stars Hollows... I thought that uh, I thought that Lauren Graham, who mm. is approaching fifty, mm. if I had to choose, like you know, because of the incest thing that everyone's getting all worried about. Mm-hmm. So if I just choose one, mm-hmm. I would go Lauren Graham. Mm. And now I know I'm a man who um, is maturing. My tastes are maturing. Yes. Um, I, I have a far more mature outlook on life. I I think uh, you know because I'm sort of in the middle between the two, which also is <laughs> in my fan fiction. Um, you know, like Rory's like close enough to thirty, yeah. Lorelai's close enough to fifty. I've just turned forty, yeah. And, and um, yeah, I I think 
Lauren Graham's just... I did fall in love with that character. Mm. She's so lovely. Yeah. And they sort of talk about her. She talks about being fat. They show her eating all the time. <gasps> they show her eating so much. They talk about food. And she looks fine. She doesn't she look looks, fat at no, all. She, she looks, looks great. Right. So uh, I thought that was a bit rough. But yeah, I, I really liked her. Whereas I thought Rory was... There was this sort of like... There was a disconnect there. Bird-like manicness to her. This sort of like hungriness. Like she... She was, like, too ambitious and kind of forward thing. I just think I would let Rory down. Mm. But I feel like Lorelai would appreciate it more. Because mm. she's, she's like, looking to nest. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So, yeah. That's what I think. Okay. Cool. Out um, of the way. Done. I've, sp- I've spoken about that bit. Okay. Well... That aspect of Well, the show. look, if you're going to talk about your, uh, your tarps down characters, I just need to have a little mention of uh, Jess. Yeah, who I was very disappointed when you... Because you were ahead of me at that point. We're, we're talking to each other on Messenger, and you're like, oh, Jess is a hell of babe. And I'm like, well, I can't wait to see Jess then. Ow! And then it was a man. Jess is a dude! Jess is the hottest dude. No, I was like... I was super into Jess back in the day. Um, and I've, I've got to say, Jess the man, even better than Jess the boy. It's sort of like a Stamos situation. Oh, God, he's so fucking hot. Even when Jared Padalecki turned up to be, you know, Dean in the supermarket at the end, I was like step aside fucking sasquatch yeah <laughs> this sexy little greasy italian fella is uh is all all about it yeah um i was so fucking excited to see him and he was in it a lot more than i thought he was going to be as well so that was cool um and also i hadn't watched the later stuff uh the later gilmore girls episodes when she was in college and stuff so i didn't really know about logan but logan was was fine oh they were was he one of the gorilla men <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, he wasn't one of the gorilla men. He was the friend... They were the friends. Were there three friends? Or I thought it was Logan and two friends. No, it was Logan and three friends. Oh, okay. The three friends were the gorillas, and then Logan turned up. Well, they all sucked. Um, yeah, there were moments where I was just like, this is a fever dream. I'm not following it. What's going on? But um, I don't know. The thing that struck me, isn't it? Something about that 90s-ness of it is they live in this town of really eclectic, eccentric, Mm. annoying people that they have to tolerate. Like, you have to smile and nod and and go along with all this weirdness, and and that's your life, is Mm. smiling and nodding and tolerating. Mm -hmm. And I just couldn't handle it. No. I'm way too cynical. I felt like I'd like to see a web series where two normal girls (laughs) are digitally... Um, put in lots of cutaways yeah. so that they're sitting on park benches and stuff in their sunglasses like watching the Gilmore girls talk and just mm-hmm. being like the fuck is that bitch even <laughs> saying <laughs> and and they're just having a real world commentary yeah. on the craziness that is happening in that town mm. and the most annoying thing and it struck me from literally the first shot whenever they have coffee cups there's nothing in them and there's very clearly nothing in them because they're not very good at pretending to drink coffee and that gave me the shits the whole way through this series um you you started that off by saying that was the most annoying thing and i feel like i could name like about ten thousand things that were more annoying than that in that show no because by the time i think the things that annoyed you were annoying you i think i'd settled in Mm. i think i'd accepted the insanity at that point and i was Mm. willing to go along with whatever like at the end at the very very end i was like all emotional and teared up and you're there like i mean this is the most fucked episode ever and i'm like "Ah." that last one is a really weird one it it jumps around in a strange Mm. way but um i i think i just kept going because i just like lauren graham Mm. i just like her yeah She's not. She's got a uh, biography out. Actually. Oh, really? Yeah, something about talking really fast. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, oh, and it was really cool to see uh, Melissa McCarthy reappear in the yeah. most the most wonderful character reintroduction ever. It was the most sooky thing ever, and she's only in it for like what about five minutes. I know. But it was perfect. It was so perfect. She just came in with Chewie and she said, we're home. Yeah. And I I teared up too. I love Melissa McCarthy. I've really grown to just really like her. There's something about, like, you know, hearing a voice and, like, just seeing and I just... It's something very familiar. I've seen quite a lot of Melissa McCarthy movies lately. Yeah. Yeah, well, my introduction to her was as Sookie and the Gilmore Girls. So I've always liked her. I've seen Gilmore 
peripherally through my ex, but yeah, I don't remember a lot of like I don't remember Suki, I don't remember Paris. Hmm. How like of all the jobs for them to give Paris, like uh, she's a uterus pimp. Yes. Basically, she works at like some fertility clinic, and she's shopping out surrogates. Again, that was a weird diversion storyline too. There's such crazy shit it happening was, in this series. It's so uneven. It's called Rent a Cunny. But uh, I've got to admit that at the first episode, I was like, I hate this. I can't go on. By the end of that last episode, I was like, Oh God, please don't leave me. I need more. You want season two? Yeah, I want season two because, yeah. like, okay, and spoilers right at the end. Though of. Ugh. Oh God! Don't, okay. No, don't. Give people, give people some time. To, God, to I want to talk about no, that. No. <laughs> okay. We'll do a we'll do a fuck yeah Gilmore Girls in a in a in a week or so. Oh yeah, okay. Maybe yeah. over Christmas we'll watch it all again. That's it. <laughs> minute by minute. <laughs> Let's not. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, look, I, I enjoyed it. I want some more, even though it had significant faults. I enjoyed my uh, trip back to Stars Hollow. But were they for faults, or is that just like... That, that's what we were expecting, right? I, no, I think it's really weird and uneven. I think, as a series, it's really weird. But do you think that if you went back... I've been watching the original series. I've... I've well, I haven't got very far, but I've nearly finished season one, and it's not that bad. Okay. Yeah. So what, the problem is it's just too dialed up? Yeah, it is. Like, that first scene where they're just like... Blah, 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 I was just like, oh, it was never like this. Yeah, they've just kind of cranked everything up to 11. Like, everyone is at their most. And everyone is pretty obnoxious, so everyone is at their most obnoxious. Well, they've got limited time. I just like the balls of Netflix. I just like the idea that they're exploring different ways of doing things as well. Mm. To go, well, why not four 90-minute episodes? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. You can, they can do whatever you want. Yeah. There's no rules. It's like commercials. There's no big network fat cat breathing <laughs> over it. It's just like whatever you want. Even the last one's a bit longer. Mm. And that's like Black Mirror. The last episode of season three was movie length. Mm. Did they say that was going to happen? Were the other ones? No, just did it. Yeah. If you don't like it, well, okay. there's the door, yeah. buddy. <laughs> yes, right. no, so that is pretty great that, uh, you know, anything could come back. That's true. Yeah. God, so Except maybe not, uh, you may not have heard this news, but maybe Serenity can't come back. In a, oh, actually, no, it could, because the, um, the guy who plays Book, he died today. He just died. Really? Yeah, the actual guy died. But in the movie, he died anyway, I think. So they could resurrect Serenity because he wouldn't be in it. Which one was Book? The old guy? Yeah. Okay. Oh, I was to keep thinking of that other Wash. guy. No. Simon? Not Two Dick. Oh, no. <laughs> Look, if Two Dick died... <laughs> I'd like, be, the Star Wars people would be like, shit! I'd be crying my eyes out. Yeah. Um, no, I always think it's Simon. I always Simon. confuse oh, Book with... Know. Yeah. No, no, no. No. No, Simon's oh, So died alive. today. Died today. Crikey. Yeah. Well, it's the end of that chapter. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. What would you like to see come back? Yeah, I I don't know. Because, like, you'd have to be one of those culty things, like the OC or uh, One Tree Hill, though that went on quite a long time after it maybe should have. Um, the, the OC would be a reasonable one, I, I think. I'd like Alf to come back. And it, no, I'm serious. And it doesn't have to be with that family either. I mean, he's his own dude. He could have moved on to someone else. You could have a whole new hot cast uh-huh. and Alf. Okay. It'd be so good. And them just not understanding what the fuck. No, is like going he's on. an alien life form and he eats cats. Yeah. That's what's to understand. Mm. Give me four. Yo, Willie. I kill me. It's so oh, good. Oh no. <laughs> there have to be a guy called Willie though, so we could say Yo, Willie. Or he just nicknamed someone Willy, just so we yeah. could just call them Willy. Or it could be, like, someone called, like, Wang or Dong. Yeah. That'd be fine. Yeah. Oh, it'd be a culturally diverse Well, that cast. would be cool. Yeah. I'd love that. Yeah. Yeah. Alf, Netflix, if you're listening. <laughs> Man, you brought back Full House. You can bring back Alf. Oh, fuck, yeah. Look, they brought the puppet back in that um, Donald Trump, Johnny Depp thing. Alf's in that. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, With right. With the guy, so, you know. Yeah. Do it. All right. I'd like to talk about Westworld. Okay. So we're going to talk about Westworld. We're going to do some spoilers. Um, I could be spoiling future episodes. My theory is right. Maybe. Let's see. 
But uh, so if you don't want to be spoiled on Westworld, thanks for listening to this really odd one. Hopefully there'll be a, a movie next week and we'll be back on course. But, um, yeah, you can go to fruitlesspursuits.com, find out everything we're doing, links to our Facebook, iTunes, rate, review us, Patreon, all that sort of fun stuff. Um, definitely come and chat to us on the Facebook page. We love to have your feedback. And it was really cool to see uh, the feedback last time and that um, some of you had uh, taken on some of those recommendations. Sweet fishes. Fuck yeah. Mm. And, um, and people were either uh, thrilled at seeing um, Fantastic Beasts or disappointed. Mm. But uh, as I said, if you're going to be cynical about it, you won't enjoy it. Yeah, exactly. It's magic. But there is some magic in there for those who have open hearts and minds. No. And bum bums. <laughs> uh, so we're going to start spoiling Westworld right about now. No. It was really the fallout from the previous episode after yeah. the uh, murder. Uh, we got the um, backstory of the man in black, which is a little bit different to... I thought that uh, you know, he was so good at killing and raping, I thought he'd been doing it for mm. you know at least uh, three decades. Mm. But he's quite new to that. Yeah, he got a little taste of it and went, ooh, I like that flavour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So he had to, had to know, didn't he? He was mm. like, he was a guy that everyone thought was like... You know, a, a little bit uh, tense, mm-hmm. and uh, he had to see what it felt like to be bad. Mm-hmm. And uh, now he, he's all in that. But uh, my main thing, I really want to talk about this theory I have. So the re- the way I got to this, I was thinking we see HBO sort of setting this up like their new Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. And then I thought, what made Game of Thrones, what made everybody talk about it in the first season? And it was, spoilers for Game of Thrones, Ned's decapitation. Yeah. That was the, like, shocking thing that no one saw coming. And I thought, well, what could they do to do a similar thing in this? And it would have to be Anthony Hopkins. Mm. He's the biggest actor in here, and he's the one that you think is so permanent and so tied to everything because he runs the park Mm -hmm. and he's in control and he's like the puppet master but then I thought well it's more likely to have gotten Anthony Hopkins if he just went I'll do nine or ten episodes Mm -hmm. Um, because he probably doesn't want to indefinitely be on this show for Mm -hmm. the rest of his life Um, so they must have some sort of exit strategy for him unless he's got this open ended contract which I doubt so then I started thinking, well, how could he die? Like, how could that fit into what we know so far? And we talked about that episode with the backstories, how Teddy was given a backstory and Bernard was given a backstory. And that was also when we found out about Arnold for the first time. Mm-hmm. And we got that backstory and we knew that two out of those three were fabricated. Well, we know that now, mm-hmm. that two out of those backstories are fabricated. So I thought what if his is as well and my theory is that when he had this argument with Arnold about the robots gaining sentience yeah. and evolving he's saying he won but I think Arnold won and replaced him with a robot mm. I think Arnold won and the backstory that Hopkins won is a lie and he was replaced with a robot so everyone would think that Hopkins won and the business would appear to be continuing as normal, mm. whereas the robots were actually continuing to evolve and expand because Arnold was pulling the strings. Mm. And I think that'll be revealed, and I think Arnold will be a much cheaper and more actor. available yeah. actor than <laughs> Hopkins was. And um, that'll be the shock where we realise, oh, no, um, you know, and bear in mind, we're recording this on Sunday. We won't see the new episode tomorrow. So if all this happens tomorrow and you're listening to this after, I am saying this on the Sunday. Mm-hmm. But that, yeah, that's my theory that that's what they're going to do. And then we'll know that all three of the backstories were manufactured and Bernard was exposition sort of foreshadowing of the idea that a person mm, could does, be a robot seem... and not realise that they were. Yeah, it does seem quite quick to then do that Bernard one, which did feel like a big reveal, and then to do another big reveal a couple of episodes later. Yeah, it I, feels a bit quick, I, and I mean, it's a little bit different from the Ned Stark thing, because you felt way more invested in Ned Stark. Well, look, maybe this is something in the future, I don't know, but mm-hmm. th- that's what I reckon's happened. I reckon mm-hmm. that's some... Yeah. Because we've... All our knowledge of that situation is based on us believing that Ford won out over Arnold. Mm. But what if that's not the case? Because... 
it seems everything seems to be moving more towards Arnold's plan than mm. Ford's plan. Yeah. Plus, when Ford met the man in black and the man in black thought he would get opposition, Ford said, you're not, I'm not going to stop you, which seems contrary to what Ford wants mm. and more in line with what Arnold wants. He wanted him to go and find the maze and to journey through it. So, so the idea of the maze is that he can die in the maze? Like, if he goes into the maze, there are things in there that can kill him? No, the maze is for the... I thought the maze was for the host. The idea is that the maze, if, if you were able to reach a certain level of self-knowing and yeah. consciousness, oh, that you, okay. would you would be able to travel maze. through the maze, and if you Get. got through it, you would have your freedom. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's my theory at the moment. Mm, okay. Um, I reckon that... Uh, it's all a bit of a uh, mm, make I think, belief. Yeah, I think to go down that route, yeah, I'm not sure because the reveal with Bernard means that everybody's going to be suspicious of everybody now. You know, so if they yeah. were to reveal that somebody else is a robot, it'd be like, oh, yeah, okay. No, not if it was Anthony Hopkins, though. Uh, Plus, they, they're going to have to do something big in these last couple of episodes. They're going to be some sort of cliffhanger or some sort of big reveal. I reckon the, uh, and yeah, I reckon it'll perfect. be something with Maeve. I reckon they'll have some big big event with Maeve, like she'll just go berserk or something. And they've got this perfect time. Because Arnold has to be... But, but look at this in terms of Arnold's character. Mm. You, you have to get some mileage out of it. There's got to be a reason why he's not given a full name and why there's no images or anything of him. There's like got to be something about that character. Wasn't there a photo of him on Thingo's desk? I can't remember. There's going to be, like, something about that reveal, though, because mm. they're playing it so close to the chest. Mm. And Well, that Ford is Arnold. But that's the thing. You can either do it two ways. Either Arnold turns up and is this character that no one's ever seen before, and then mm. that's pretty anticlimactic. Yeah. Or he turns up and you go... Or, he, yeah, or he's revealed to be someone we already know. Yeah. Which, um, again, so I feel like this idea of... Um, that information being false in an episode which was all about people's past being false mm. um, and then being seeded with events that didn't actually happen and were being motivated by those key mm. events. And I feel like the thing with Arnold was the key event, the thing with Wyatt was the key event for Teddy, mm. and the thing with the son was the key event for Bernard. Mm. I just think, like, thematically and writing-wise and everything, it all links up. Mm, okay. But um, who knows? We'll, we shall see. But, uh, yeah... Once I sort of started thinking about that, I was like, mm, yeah, I reckon maybe Arnold didn't lose. I reckon that might be a fiction. I mean, I agree that there's going to be fatigue if everybody starts becoming robots, mm. if it becomes a sort of battle star kind mm. of thing, and they're going to want to avoid that. But I, I think, you know, I, I think you need, even though it's close to the Bernard thing, I think you need the Bernard reveal as a way to ease you into that. Because I feel like if it just happened with Hopkins, then you'd be like, oh, what, Rupert, how does he, mm. why does he think he's, you know, you need to know that someone can be Do a that. robot and yeah. not know they're a robot. Yeah. And that would have to be the situation with him. I think Ford, if he is a robot, doesn't know he's a robot. Yeah. I think yeah. Arnold has programmed everybody to think that it's business as usual when it's not. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, we shall see. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, Maeve was the one cool shit. She slashed the dude's throat. So, that, I mean, that's the first full-on robot attack on a human. Yeah, yeah. That's it just still really makes no sense. But I am I'm looking forward to Maeve inevitably just destroying a whole bunch of shit. But, uh, yeah, I guess the catalyst for this storyline was a bit stupid. Uh, but, I yeah, I'm looking forward to the, the uh, Havoc Shurex. What was a bit, which was a bit, what was a bit stupid? Well, this, like, what was their motivation? The scientist guys. Oh, for helping her. For helping her. Well, like, one they of them have no real... Like, okay, well, that's it's only really one of them, because the other one didn't want to help her. They were going to shut her down. He was going to shut her down. That's why yeah. he got his throat slashed. Yeah, and I mean, part of it is, you know, okay, maybe he's curious as to how far this can go, but, like, one, why do these guys have so much access to everything? They're literally, like, flush out the cum guys. Like, that's their job. Why do they have access to all these operating system stuff? Why can they do this? They're like, oh, no, we need a higher higher grade to access that stuff. And then they just go, oh, yeah, and just do it. How does that work? Like Snowden shit. Yeah, sure. Um, sure, yeah. But I, as much as it really annoys me that none, of, that none of that makes a lot of sense for a company that is so concerned about its secrets... 
to have these lowly kind of scrubber guys have that much access and that much control seems weird. And they could have, like, I mean, they didn't have to completely wipe her or anything. Like, he could have his little magic iPad, and where he has a intelligence up at 40,000, he can just go whoop. And just put it back down to 10. Well, I don't know how these robots work, Jacinta. I don't know if it's that simple. They're controlled by a magic iPad, uh, Luke. Yeah, it could be. Yeah. It, there could be an app for that. I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's that simple. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm torn on things like that. Mm. I, I, I feel like when there's a big push for let's make this more sensible, you sometimes go, yeah, but would that make it a better episode but that make it a better show if no, everyone I, acted sensibly and none of these things happened like i don't know but i just want the guy to have a reasonable reason for doing it there just seems to be no real reason for him to we, be doing any of this she just tells him to do it and he's like oh yeah sure did one of them bang her I, no i don't think so wasn't someone got caught banging one of the robots when they were supposed to be oh yeah the other guy i think was it um, the other guy yeah i don't know yeah maybe I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I'm Maybe not... he loves her. What about love? What about love as a reason? Maybe. He might. He might do. Quite lovable. Mm. Unless she's got a scalpel in her hand. Oh, yeah. She, yeah. <laughs> she didn't slash his throat. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Like, you know, it is a Snowden situation where you're in there, you're in deep, and you think, you're looking around at everything and thinking, you know what? This isn't right, what mm. we do here. It's just you not know, right. The other thing that confuses me, like, they parade around and walk around and then take her to other places. Like, at no point does anybody else go, what are you doing with her? Oh, I suppose heaps of people walking around with naked robots. But they go and, like, go into other... Yeah. yeah. yeah you probably sit in the canteen and... Uh, okay. Never. Well, bloody um, Tessa Thompson banged one of them. Chain... Chained him, just took him off the floor and took him upstairs. Yeah, well, she can do what she wants. She's the boss boss. Yeah, well, look, I just think uh, it's one of those things. It's like when you work at McDonald's and you get a discount on the meals. <laughs> I think it's fine. I, look, I, I'm willing to debate the finances of the place, the operating okay. costs, All the right. order There was no and finance stuff this week. But Bullshit. otherwise, I'm not so sure. Yeah, I, you know, I thought for a second, yeah. and I had to rewind it, when that fucking big... A third guy with the horns came out. I thought for a minute we had a host escaping from fucking Viking world or something. What guy with the horns? Like when the um in the Lyle the intern story, there was a big oh, guy oh, yeah. with the yeah came out, and I thought, oh shit, has like a robot from another park come across? Yeah. And I thought, are we getting into that? Maybe yeah. that's our twist for the. Yeah. the no. Yeah, they got, those guys were kind of cool. They're but, all right. Yeah. Oh. They were fine. Nothing about the Lyle the Intern uh, storyline is really engaging me at this point. I'm just like, you're just wandering through the woods. Interesting. What are you doing? Stuff with Dolores. And, and we know that Dolores was one of the special things, like Bernard, because her plans were in the in the yeah. underground printing, 3D printer yeah. room. Yeah, and there's some definite um, ideas that there are multiple kind of story like timelines happening at the same yeah, time yeah she's remembering old her, her old role and there was some sort of massacre or something happened mm. so yeah anyway but we, then is there also that idea that maybe some of these stories that we are seeing they're not actually all happening in one timeline no they I don't, could all I don't be different timelines I don't believe that okay no I, I think that would like the, the problem with doing something like that is it has to be unraveled at some point. Like, it has to be explained. And I just can't imagine... Like, that's not something a character can do. I don't know. Mm, I've seen other shows do similar things, but, yeah, it, it would be a part of a... I don't know. I guess, I guess part of a reveal as to who... Yeah, when timelines converge and stuff like that. Mm. But, um, yeah, I'm kind, of, I'm kind of open to it because of the different... Um, when she gets to that town that she gets to in this one and the the church and all you can see is kind of the spire of the church or something. Yeah. Um, and there's that ongoing thing of, oh, we're like, you know, we're digging up old towns and, and stuff like that. So, yeah. Yeah, I thought she was seeing the side of something bad that had happened in the past that had been wiped mm. from a previous role. 
But uh, yeah, we shall see. Yeah. Well, we hit an hour. I can't believe we hit an hour with I our know. complete non-show. So let's just such a Seinfeld get episode. The fuck it's out a show now about nothing. While we, it's Jon Snow. While uh, <laughs> we're ahead. Yeah. All right. Well, look. Thanks for listening. Um, yeah, I mean, this was a show that we could have almost skipped, but it was just, you think, well, we might as well have a chat. We, yeah. we see this as like, um, although, you know, you don't get to chat back, but you do on our Facebook page. Uh, it's like, yeah, just sitting in the lounge room, chatting to people about stuff that happened during the week, mm. pop culture. So Yeah, and we were sitting here trading, uh, trading cards, so we thought, well, fuck it, let's just put the microphone on. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. I think it's next week, like Underworld or something. Oh Christ! I'm psyched for Underworld. I've really? Never seen, I've never seen an Underworld movie, but it just looks batshit. Oh, I watched. I watched. You know, I said I was going to watch them. I watched the first two. Yeah. I think the third one doesn't have Beckinsale. I think it's like a prequel or something. And then was that the Lycans one? Don't know. Okay. But yeah, but they're very blue and grey. Yep. I but, like uh, blue. We shall see. We'll find something. But, uh, yeah, thanks for listening, and uh, we'll catch you soon. Camelot. Camelot.